Right, so w welcome everyone to Ian Woodley talking to Box of Business Leaders. I've known Ian for a couple of years. He does some really good graphic design for the scientific community particularly. Uh, Ian's been a faithful member of Oxford Business Leaders since we started at the beginning of COVID. So Ian, over to you and uh, do talk to us for between five and ten or maybe a bit longer and then afterwards we'll have questions which will leave it recording. Um, please remember to the group that you are live on Channel 4 so please do not swear. Okay, off you go Ian. Thank you very much. So yeah, I'll, I'll try and spin it out to um, 10 minutes for you, Alan. <laughs> uh, so welcome everybody. Uh, just as a brief introduction, so Ian Woodley at Stilo, we are a um, design studio that focus on uh, helping businesses grab attention and really engage with their customers through powerful and memorable design. And we do this across design for print, through motion graphics, and through interactive digital as well. So it's all about helping businesses explain their processes and really put them in the best possible light for when they're trying to engage with their customers. So I thought what I'd do this morning is just share just a couple of points, really some couple of quick takeaways for you that I uh, have in discussions with our clients and things that I sort of pass on to them really. So the first thing I would say really is be the authority in the space where you're operating, okay? And really what I mean by that is, what we wanna be doing is really focusing on where you add value to your clients, okay? Where do you really excel? Don't try and do everything to everybody, but really focus on your key skill sets and actually command that space then for your customers and whether that gets into the whole niching area, but just really be an authority in that particular space that you know you can really excel and add value at. And really a, a key part of that is trying to understand obviously those challenges that your customers have and how you can solve those. And that's really difficult. I get a lot of people saying to me, you know, well, well, you know, how, how do you understand your customer challenges? And, and, and we, we struggle with that sometimes, particularly in the technical space, uh, in the scientific space, and with maybe advanced manufacturing. And so we, over the last couple of weeks, we've done some uh, customer interviews. Um, I took about uh, four or five different clients and just got them on a call for, for an hour and ran through a load of different questions with them and actually unearthed a huge amount of detail with regards to what their issues were. And that's really helped us focus our core proposition to how we go out to other businesses in those sectors as well in terms of understanding what their problems are and what was interesting is we went to about three four five different uh technology advanced manufacturers and they were all saying the similar kind of thing which was really reassuring actually because we thought great we're on to something here this is obviously a problem for some people uh, and there were probably about three or four key questions there that we asked that came back with similar answers so it's something I've been putting off for a long, long time, but actually, you know, just getting on the phone, asking those questions and finding those challenges. And then that really helps us to position our proposition, become that consultant and really making sure that every kind of bit of messaging we put out there is addressing those challenges for them. So as a, as a bit of an example here, uh, we've been working down at Bedbrook Science Park for a med tech business. Uh, they want to command this med tech space, they've got a new uh, medical imaging device, which has got some groundbreaking technology. And so we're working with them and bringing that to market. Um, they're looking for investment funding over in Silicon Valley. They're looking for partners over here. So we're working with them in terms of sort of building the brand and actually getting them to own that space. And that can be something from brand identity, but then it can also be about creating the look feel of this technology that they have. And so we'll put together some, some little little bit of graphics in there just to really help them command that little that space for them. Okay. Uh, and then as another example, we've been working with a marketing um, agency who totally repositioned their uh, approach to market. Instead of being a, a general marketing agency, they wanted to talk about the customer journey within organizations, okay, and about all these different touch points that 
um, your customers come into contact. So say, for example, you are an energy supplier. Uh, there's lots of different ways that, that you as a customer will come into contact with this energy supplier. And so they are experts at road mapping this, um, this journey. And so they wanted a really simple, buzzy, punchy little video that they could put out to try and illustrate what customer journey mapping is all about. What is customer journey mapping? And why does it deliver tangible business benefits? And so we just put together customer a little animation for them, the really to help to them the tell their story in a really clear way, okay? Something that they can put out onto social Using media, they can put on their website. businesses in lots of ways, such as reducing customer churn, increasing sales and revenue. So, so you get the idea there. The second thing I would say is less is more. This is a little bit of a mantra of mine, but it's all about when you're thinking about the message that you're putting out to your, um, to your audience, it's very much about efficiency. It's about clarity of message, right? Try and pare down those words and that messaging to the, action, to, the, to the minimum that you need to convey that information. So often I see people with huge slides with masses of text on there, loads of bullet points, and all they do is just, just read these bullet points off time and time again. And you just don't digest that. You don't take it in at all. So it's all about efficiency of messaging, thinking about the words you choose and keeping it really simple from a language point of view. And remember, when we're putting this message out to our audience, it's not about us at all. It's all about the, it's all about the audience. It's all about our customer and what's important to them. You know, we all know that the phrase about we and all over our customers, you know, but you get on your website, it's always we do this, we do that, we do this, you know, but it's all really about think that message and turn it around the other way so that it's actually focusing on their problems, their challenges, and it's so much more relevant to them then. And I always say that, you know, if you can't explain it simply, then you don't understand it well enough. Think about what you do and think about what your customers do and if you really get under the skin of that, then you can explain it very, very simply. So as an example of that one, this is a, uh, well, they're a Canadian business actually, but they're in the pharmaceutical industry producing uh, milling machines, compacting machines for uh, powdered formulations. This was their old brochure they had, which they weren't very happy with, which I was really pleased about. The design of it was really poor, but actually more importantly, the, the messaging was wrong on it. It was all about, we do this, here are features, this is, this, this is everything that we do. And the, 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 the tone and the language on this was all wrong for the audience, okay? It wasn't talking about solving their problems. And the byproduct of that was that actually it didn't position them in the right brand space at all. It made them look like they were sort of a, a very average business. In actual fact, they're a global leader, but they just didn't convey that when they came across. So we looked at refreshing this for them, about building this new brand image for them, almost taking them from a Ford to a Mercedes brand space, you know? Paring down the information, really thinking about the messaging we put out there, and really placing that product as hero. And also when it came to the, the layouts in the brochures itself, having a really pared down um, layout, full page imagery, which they'd never done before, and actually the luxury of space on a page as well. Instead of cramming everything, trying to fill every single bit of space, we actually had some considered messaging and just giving it all space to breathe a little bit, yeah? And really using that imagery to come across as a technical leader that they are. So we totally flipped around the language. Um, all, of, all of the statements talking about them went right to the back of the brochure and everything at the front was talking about, these are your problems and this is how we help with it, okay? And that's worked really, really well for them. The third point I would say is, oh, hang on, sorry, here we go. So um, as a final thing, what we did for these guys as well is we looked at some, some little social media animations as well, just because they had some key points that they wanted to hit their customer challenges, the problems they had 
and how they solve them. So we just put together some, some really simple little um, LinkedIn animations for them just to highlight those key points. And there's a couple of different businesses within the organization. And so we, we did a similar thing across some of their different business streams as well, you see. So they, they've got some key propositions there about how they can solve uh, problems if they've got different heads that fit onto pieces of machinery that do different processes, okay? So that was a simple way really of just addressing some of those areas. So the third and final thing really is to engage, is to engage with our audience, really grab their attention. And what we're finding, particularly through some of these uh, interviews we had, is that you know, the customers are really educated nowadays. Talking to some of these you know, technical advanced manufacturers, the one thing they said re uh, you know, across everybody was the fact that particularly during lockdown, particularly people are at home, they're doing a lot of research online. By the time the sales guy comes to talk to them, they're really well educated. They've done all their research. They've pre-qualified a lot of information. So actually, when, when it comes for them to have a discussion, to talk about their business, they need to make sure they've got everything ready to be able to engage and to be able to really you know, create a bit of, bit of noise and to be relevant to them, to have all the tools to be able to tell their story. And I think there's a lot to be said for actually surprising people as well. If we get in front of somebody, show them something different, grab their attention, don't just, for example, um, bring up a standard PowerPoint presentation where you've got slide one, slide two, slide three, all of them have got 20 bullet points on the screen, you know? That's not gonna grab their attention, that's not gonna position you as that authority and in that space. So I think there's a lot to be said for surprising the clients and, and, and showing them something a little bit differently. And we get, um, we, we get, we get a lot, some clients, particularly within this advanced manufacturing space, uh, technical scientific space where they've got some complicated proposition they want to talk about and we help them make it simple for people to understand but then we'll also inject a little bit of dynamism into it as well so for example we might create interactive digital presentation for them okay so where they're trying to present their expertise um, what we'll do is bring together all this rich mix of assets for them. So they're not having that linear presentation, slide one, slide two. They can go wherever they want to go to tell their story, okay? Um, you know, some of these clients had 100 page PowerPoint presentations, which were just crazy. Uh, and what it meant then is that if somebody, somebody asks a bit of a question, you just don't know where that, where that answer is. And so we've really helped some of these businesses streamline their message and to tell it in a very dynamic way and to grab that attention, okay? So just as a quick example on this one, let's just see if I can get this to work. Here we go. So you saw a shot on screen here of that, um, that this NeoPearl one, okay? So this would be an example of, of how you, when you're presenting, you can bring together a real rich mix of different um, marketing tools, sales tools, to help you really create that difference. So for example, what they might have in this presentation here is they could go to their group information and they could launch a video and they can scrub through all of this if they want. They could go to um, their products, and drill down into their products straight down to a product level if they want to. And from the product level, they can bring up technical information. Or they can bring up product range. Or they could launch an individual product application video if they wanted to. Okay. And it just helps them tell their story in a really, really dynamic way. Okay. Um, or they can go into a particular design feature look at something they might have won an award for, and then for, drill down and find out more information about all of this, okay? So that's what we mean by sort of the interactive side of things.
And then finally, I would say really, um, if, if you're looking at, at print applications and we're trying to engage our audience, then think about um, the, the opportunities that printed material gives you. Think about different folds, think about different print finishes, because all of that really helps create an impact. And uh, we're seeing more and more conversations with print nowadays, particularly when you know, there's so much digital, so much um, email traffic coming through. Actually, to have a considered piece of, of, uh, of, of material land on somebody's desk and you've thought about the format, you've thought about how you reveal the information through various different folds, you can stage the delivery of information really well that way. Thinking about the paper that you printed on and about different print finishes, actually, that conveys a really strong uh, impression to them as to the kind of organization you are, okay? So those would be my three kind of top tips really. Be the authority, think about economy of language and efficiency of language, and also about engaging your audience. Yeah, and that's so really wonderful. Much. Thank you very much. Um, okay, let's put you on, if you want to stop sharing your screen. Yeah, let's do that. Uh, and uh, any questions,